Hi, welcome to this tutorial on transformations of graphs. Where I'm going to look at stretches. Now, if you've got a curve, let's say y equals f of x, and I've drawn a couple of curves here, y equals f of x. I haven't given you the equations, but that doesn't matter. What I'm going to demonstrate without proof, all right, you're just going to accept these results. If you want the proof of these results, just go on my website and look under the transformations of graphs and you'll see a link to proving these results. Anyway, suppose we have, say, this curve here, y equals fx, or any curve for that matter. If we take, say, y equals 2 f of x, then you can see that the a here is the 2. And what this is telling us is that the graph gets stretched parallel to the y-axis by a scale factor of a, in this case 2. So what does that mean? Well, if we take, say, some key points on this curve, this point here for instance, if we stretch its scale factor of 2, parallel to the y-axis, because it's two units below the x-axis, we now double that distance and it becomes minus four. So we're going to have a point there. Take this point, for instance. This is one and a half units below the x-axis. So if we double that, that's going to be three units below the x-axis. So it's going to be there. This is a special point as well, a point on the x-axis. It's neither above nor below, so if you double that when it's on the x-axis, its displacement, which is zero, it's going to remain zero. So it's what we call an invariant point. It stays put. This point at minus one is two units high. Double that and it'll be four units high. This point on the y-axis, well, that gets doubled. It's one unit up at the moment, so it's going to be two. Here's another invariant point. Okay, so that point's going to stay put. This one is just over halfway up, so double that and you're just going to get somewhere over one. And this one here is two units up, double that and it'll be four units. So what's the graph going to look like? When we join these points up, what we get is this, y equals 2f of x then, a stretch scale factor 2 parallel to the y-axis. Now if a was a fraction less than 1 say but greater than 0 let's say a half. Let's draw this graph in y equals a half f of x. What's this going to do? Well it's a stretch scale factor a half this time parallel to the y-axis. So if we're looking at points again what we've got is, say, this point, which is two units below the x-axis, we halve that. So it becomes one unit below the x-axis. And again, I could just go through all these points on the red graph and just halve them. This point stays invariant, for instance. This point that's two units up, now is halved, is one unit. This point on the y-axis is halved, it's there. Another invariant point there. And this point on the end is two units up, so that's halved. And if we join these points up, the curve that we get then is essentially y equals a half f of x. Now, as I say, this would apply to any graph, okay? When you multiply it by a number in the front, it produces a stretch then, scale factor exactly the same as that number that you've got in the front, parallel to the y-axis. Okay, we'll move on now to another type of stretch, and this time it's a stretch parallel to the x-axis, but this is slightly more complicated. What happens here is that if we have a graph, say y equals, let's say, f of 2x. What we do is we replace any x in the equation for f of x by 2x. And if you were to sketch that graph, 
then you can see the A value here is the 2. But what it produces is a scale factor of 1 over 2. In other words, a half in this case. A scale factor of a half parallel to the x-axis. That will be the stretch. So what does that mean? Well, if we take a point like this, what we're doing is we halve all the distances out from the y-axis. So for instance, this point here is two units to the left of the y-axis. So we need to halve that, and so we have one unit to the left. Take this point here. It's one unit to the left. We need to half that, so it's going to be there. This one is half a unit. Half that, and you'll be at a quarter and so on, all the way up. When you get to this point, this is on the y-axis, it stays invariant, so that's going to stay there. This peak here, okay, seems to peak at half a unit away from the y-axis on this side, the right-hand side. So, it's going to peak again at half this distance out here, almost about there, okay, if I can just squeeze it in, all right, hardly see it there, but there it is. Let's take another key point. This point here, where the curve of y equals fx crosses the x-axis, it's two units out. It's now going to be one unit out. So you can see we have a squashed in curve. And if we join those points up, this is what we get. y equals f of 2x then produces a stretch of scale factor a half parallel to the x-axis. OK, let's look at one more. And if we look at, say, y equals f of, say, a half x, we replace any x in the equation for f of x with a half x. What happens here? Well, a is a half, and so you've got 1 divided by a half, which is 2. It's as if we invert the fraction here. So what this produces is a stretch, scale factor 2, parallel to the x-axis. So what's going to happen is that this point here, which is 2 units to the left of the y-axis, now is doubled, and it goes to 4 units. If we take another key point, this point here, which is 1 unit to the left of the y-axis, now is doubled to minus 2, and so on. This one here looks to be just over a half, so it's going to be just over one. So we'll just say it's about there-ish. This point here, for instance, stays invariant. Let's take another key point. This one here, look, that's one unit out. That's going to get doubled, so it's going to go there. And this point here at two gets doubled, so it's going to be there. And if you join these points up, you're going to get the curve then of y equals f of a half x. And again, this would apply to any curve of y equals f of x type. It would stretch it by a scale factor of 2 parallel to the x-axis. It would pull it apart, if you like. OK, so, well, I hope you've got that. And that brings us to the end of this tutorial.